In a previous lesson, we learned how to find the area of an irregular shape by using the offset method to measure lengths along the shape at regular intervals and then applying the trapezoidal rule to calculate the area. However, if it is not physically possible to measure the offset lines directly, a modified version of the offset method can be applied. This is particularly true when you want to find the surface area of a wide body of water, for instance. In such cases, it might be more feasible to indirectly obtain the lengths of the offset lines by employing the modified offset method. Now just for reference, I have the trapezoidal rule shown here. This is a formula that approximates the area once data has been collected. Now in this video, our goal is to use the modified offset method to find the area of the irregular shape shown on your screen. Let's begin with step number one. The very first step involves placing the irregular shape inside a surrounding rectangle aiming for a snug fit. Label the vertices of the rectangle A through D. Measure the length and the width of the enclosing rectangle to obtain the necessary dimensions. The length of the line AB or CD will represent the distance of the length line or the broadest part of the land. Step number two. Just as we did with the original offset method, Step two involves selecting the desired number of trapezoids to approximate the space. For simplicity, we will split the area into five equal spaced sections. In other words, five trapezoids. Whatever you end up choosing, divide the length line, which we found earlier, by this chosen quantity. For us, that's 16 centimeters divided by five, which gives us 3.2 centimeters. This number means our offsets and offset lines will be placed 3.2 centimeters apart. This number will also serve as our common trapezoid height when applying the trapezoidal rule later on. The difference between the modified offset method and the original is that here we find the length of the offset lines indirectly, as you'll see in the next step. It is also advisable to label each offset appropriately for reference later. Step number three. We measure the distance from the edge of the rectangle to the outer boundary of the shape along each offset marking. For example, for offset E, measure this part and this part and take their sum. Then subtract the sum from the width of the enclosed rectangle to get the actual width of the irregular shape at each interval. Let's do another one so you understand it better. This part measures 0.5 centimeters and this part measures 1.1 centimeters. Together, they add up to 1.6 centimeters. Subtracting this value from 10 centimeters, or the width of the rectangle, indirectly gives us the length of the offset line that would otherwise traverse the shape, had it not been for those physical constraints. Here's a summary of all the measurements, including those taken from offset G and H. Note that the offset line for AC and BD which represent the first and the last observations, both have a length of zero centimeters. Now keep in mind that this isn't always the case. Here's an example of an irregular shape where the first and the last observations would be something other than zero. With this information, we can now apply what we know to the trapezoidal rule to find the approximate area. The calculation will give us the approximate area of the following highlighted region based on our measurements. Note the areas of over and under approximation. We should expect this since trapezoids are polygons. They're not curvilinear in nature. This is the reason why the calculated area is only an approximate. Turning now to step four, where we use the trapezoidal rule, I have the formula shown on the screen and the table that I showed earlier. We have the approximate area, which is denoted as a sub total or a sub t is approximately equal to h. H represents that value we found earlier when we took the width of the rectangle and divided it by 5. Recall that the answer was 3.2. So H is equal to 3.2 divided by 2. And that's being multiplied to the first and the last observations. For that, we will look at AC and BD. Those were our first and our last offset lines. Remember, we found it to be 0 and 0. So in brackets, we'll add 0 plus 0, which simply equates to 0. So we can kind of ignore this for the data that we've been provided. Then it's being added to 2 times all the interior observations. What this means is the ones that we found other than the first and the last. They will get summed up and eventually multiplied all to 2.
let's use our calculator. We have 3.2 divided by 2. Notice that I'm placing this factor, that fraction, in parentheses. And that's being multiplied to, open bracket, two times. And within the parentheses, we have 7.9 plus 8.4 plus 6.8 plus 6.7, close, close. And this gives us an approximate area of 95.36 square centimeters. 95.36 square centimeters. You're more than welcome to round this to one decimal place, where it becomes 95.4 centimeters squared. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions about the modified offset method, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.